Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book about the life of a very well-known jurist and been known to many students, undergraduates and practitioners. His name is Sir James Fitzjames Stephen. And this particular book is one in a series. It's actually the selected writings of uh, James Fitzjames Stephen, this book here. We'll have a look at it in a moment. It's The Life of um, Sir James Fitzjames Stephen by his brother Leslie Stephen. It's been edited by Christopher Tolley. There's an introduction by uh, Hermione Lee and there are articles and reviews included from Thomas E. Schneider. Uh, the book comes to us from Oxford University Press and Elizabeth has led on the review with this and she's written a title for our book review of follows. A narrative that embraces legal history, absolutely true, the biography of an eminent Victorian jurist by his brother Leslie Stephen. Well let's have a look at the book first of all, it's a hardback from Oxford University Press, there we go, cream colour. Um, and this is one of a series of books that have been published. There is the spine, and there's some detail on the back. Then inside you've got uh, some information about the authors, all very highly qualified people. Then at the front you've got the basic information about the book itself. The book runs to something approaching um, nearly 400 pages. The index which is a standard OUP style index, is by page numbering and it's detailed and very helpful because obviously there's a huge amount of scholarship that's gone into this uh, book itself. There's the start of the index there. Then just before the index, of course, you have <coughs> a bibliography, which is a very substantial one. It's, uh, these are um, covering uh, all his articles and writings. Then if we go to the front of the book, and I'll just show you a few pieces at the front. This is the front page there. And then you've got a photograph. I just want to show you the photograph. You can get it out. There we go. There's a photograph of him, just so you, you can see what he looks like. Then some information about the book itself. Um, and then you've got the OUP data there. And then uh, detail again about the um, book. And then there is um, a dedication, which I will show you there. And after that, we then get onto the book itself. And there are there is an, an acknowledgements section, then a content section. <clears throat> now, as you probably gather, there's not a great deal in terms of the contents because it's the book itself which is the most important thing. There are a lot of illustrations, which we'll look at in a minute. Abbreviations, very helpful. This is I'm dealing with a person who was around a long time ago now, of course, um, in our modern terms. That gives you an idea of the family trees, which I again think is quite helpful. Uh, I'll be mentioning a little bit more about that later on, especially Virginia Woolf down at the bottom there. And then you've got the introductory essay by uh, Hermione Lee. And then after that, there's a, um, an editorial preface. And then you've got, um, after that, the basic title of the book, then the main preface itself, and then we get into the work after that. And you can see the structure. It's basic text all the way through, narrative text, and you've got uh, footnotes at the bottom which assist you linking into the bibliography. Now here are some photographs. I'm not going to show all of them. You can see that there are quite a large number, lots of interesting people uh, all the way through. A large number of illustrations um, and again you can see a few there there's there's one particular one um, and then you can then we get back to the text itself again some further illustrations there all in all in 400 pages a most interesting book and I think anybody involved in legal history um, will find this book of great interest but it's more than just that which is why we've decided to do the review this doesn't come from the legal part of OUP it comes from their academic side so uh, there is a lot of emphasis here on the academic and uh, scholastic sides of um, <coughs> uh, legal jurisprudence now for those interested in legal history and if you aren't you ought to be <laughs> that's what we say uh, this book published recently by OUP is quite a find 
Uh, as OUP have put it quite succinctly, this is a biography of one uh, eminent Victorian by another, the former a distinguished 19th century jurist, the latter his younger brother Leslie Stephen. And in case you're worry, uh, wondering, yes, uh, he is that Leslie Stephen, the father of Virginia Woolf. Now the Stevens were a distinguished family in more ways than one. And this um, biography, as the publishers point out, uh, is an indispensable source for the history of the Stephen family and as such should attract the interest of literary lines as well as legal eagles. And it's interesting that James Fitzjames Stephen had his own uh, OUP uh, series under the same title as this biography. And it's worth listing here some of the titles therein, which are self-explanatory and all the more um, compelling for that. A History of the Criminal Law of England, Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, on Justice and Jurisprudence, on Society, Religion and Government, and on the Novel and Journalism. The last, who knows, might well have influenced Virginia Woolf. We, we just don't know. And that's not all. In addition to other research resources, uh, the book provides a 20-page uh, bibliography containing, we would assume, the list in full of Fitzjames Stevens' articles and reviews, as well as a considerable number of his letters. And judging by some of the annotations in the bibliography by the editor, Thomas E. Uh, Schneider, JFS, as he was referred to, would come up with some sharp trenchant comments, some dismissive, some insulting, but always to the point. After writing, for example, an article entitled The House of Commons as a Debating Club in 1868, he found himself having to apologise for some rough phrases, to use the quote. My brother always likes to argue, says a quote attributed to Leslie Stephen, as cited in Hermione Lee's introductory essay which of course also contains some interesting insights on Virginia, and that's um, Stephen, um, then became Virginia Woolf, as well as her sister, Vanessa Bell, not related to the Bells myself, though I am a Bell in part. Now, and argue he did, of course, did Stephen, notably with such luminaries as John Stuart Mill, J.S. Mill, a well-known liberal. Not only was he a jurist, F.J.S. was a prolific writer, in an age when free speech was genuinely free, which it isn't, of course, today. I have been writing like a small steam engine, he remarked on a passage to India, referring to no less than 14 articles he had sent to the PMG, that's the Pall Mall Gazette, since he left home. Of course, in those days you could because of the, the lengthy amount of time it took to get from A to B by boat. And of course, that was an interesting point because quite a lot of writers did, did that um, in that particular era. And in his preface of 1895, Leslie Stephen reveals his purpose in writing this biography, which of course has been reprinted with all the additional stuff in it. I am no lawyer, he says, and I should have considered this fact to be a sufficient reason for silence. His aim, however, was to describe the man rather than to give a, a history of what he did. And to this end, the book functions um, admirably. And can I just say, I do think, uh, you know, you're getting insight here from the brother. So um, obviously there will be certain things that are uh, omitted, but at least you are getting probably a very good picture of the man. Let me conclude by saying this. The book is indeed a narrative that embraces legal history, the government of India, the Victorian press, the crises of religious um, faith, the paradise lost of political liberalism, and much more. I found it fascinating both as a political scientist, a historian and a lawyer, because certainly uh, from my perspective it brings all three together rather nicely. We will link it as jurisprudence for the purposes, but it's still politics, whether you like it or not, J.S. Mill. But there we go. Now it's a treasure trove of fact, anecdote and analysis, and it pr um, provides illuminating insights, we feel, into the intellectual ferment that characterised the Victorian age. So for lawyers and non-lawyers alike, we think it's a fascinating read. Try it yourself and see, because, I mean, it'll be available in the libraries. Lincoln's Inn certainly have a copy. The publication date is cited at 2017. So a quick look again. There's the book, the front, 
the spine and then the back, just opening it in the middle. I've got, I've shown you some of the um, photographs. This is Liberty, Equality, Fraternity, his own take on it, if I can put it that way in modern words. You can see you've got a limited number of footnotes. Uh, they fortunately don't go over the top with the footnotes. Then at the back, you've got the bibliography, which is a substantial part at the back of the book, and then, of course, the detailed index. All in all, I'm very grateful that OUP have decided to publish this uh, select this series of selected writings from um, Stephen. I think it adds to our sum of human legal knowledge tremendously. So thank you very much to everybody who's been involved in this publication. Bye-bye.